BGP implementation and tuning part three. Can you believe it? Three videos in, and we're still on the foundation BGP uh, implementation. This lets you know why it's a full-blown series of its own. What we're going to do is wrap up the foundations by looking at a concept called BGP peer groups. We're going to use this to configure neighbors much easier than doing individual neighbor statements. You'll see how to group our configurations together. Then we'll get out of the heavy stuff, out of the, the new concepts, and really just kind of take a step back and look at how the neighbors are forming. What messages are they actually sending? And how can we troubleshoot it if there's a problem? Finally, I want to officially present to you a general review of all the show and debug commands that we've used so far. Um, I know as we've been going through the initial two videos, I've been doing the show commands without really telling you what that show command is. That's what I want to do here, is officially say, this is the show command, this is what it's used for. This is the debug, this is what it's used for. So let's get going. I'm going to use the discussion of our first topic to fix what was broken from the previous video. We went through and we set up Router 1, if you remember, to receive the IBGP updates from Router 4. And if you remember from the last video, when they re were received by Router 1, they weren't put in the routing table for two reasons. One, the next hop address wasn't changed because of the next hop processing of BGP. And number two was that synchronization rule, that pesky rule, that kept BGP routes out of the table and pretty much out of use that were not backed up by an internal routing protocol first. So what we did to fix that well, was we uh, changed the next hop self on router 4 so that router 4 would say, oh, I'm going to be the next hop for all these routes coming in. And then we turned off synchronization. Now what we ended up with was a broken scenario um, with, with uh, where's my terminal? There we go. A broken scenario uh, with router 1. Let me show you. I'm going to do a show IP BGP, and this is exactly where we left off in the implement implementation part 2 video. We had all of these routes that were now considered best routes, which was great because we could do a show IP route and see them in our routing table. So this router has them in play. It's using them actively. But here's the problem. When I try and reach one of those networks, like 200.1.1.1, the pings fail. As a matter of fact, they come back as unreachable. The reason why is because as of right now, these routers, routers 3 and routers 2, have no idea what to do with traffic that's destined for network 200.1.1. Dot one or 200.1.1.0. The reason why is because they're not running BGP yet. I added this this little BGP marker when I was creating recreating the slide for the implementation part three. The way that we're going to fix the problem that we have with router one is to run BGP on router two and router three, which is supposed to be the only reason that we turn off synchronization in the first place. That that method that I use of turning synchronization off made it work for router 1, but by doing that, BGP is trusting me that all other routers know how to get around the network. So we need to fix that. We need to let router 3 and router 2 know how to do that. In order to configure router 2 and router 3 as BGP peers, I'm going to introduce the concept of BGP peer groups. It gets pretty downright tedious to start setting up BGP peers because I'm going to have to go on router 1 and set up a, a peer to 3.3.3.3. Remember that loopback address so that we have redundancy in place. I'm going to have to say update source will be my loopback 1 over here to say it's going to be coming from this. I'm going to have to configure them for the same remote AS. I'm going to have to set them up for the next top self. Then I'm going to have to go down here to router 2 and do exactly the same thing. Router 2, 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2 .2 .2. Remote AS 5500, next top self, update source. You know, all those commands that we talked about that are applied directly to the neighbors. And then I'm going to have to, if I haven't already, configure a neighbor right here to router 4 so that we have, a, it's known as a full mesh IBGP relationship where all of these routers know about each other and they're all forming neighbor relationships with each other. So the problem is that's going to be very tedious to do on a neighbor by neighbor basis. Thus, BGP peer groups. BGP peer groups allow you to come in and set up a group configuration. For example, these all have the same remote autonomous system. 
every single one of these neighbors have the same update source. It's always going to come from loopback1. Every single one of these neighbors will have to have that next hop self set. So if router1 receives updates from outside systems, it will set itself as the next hop address for all of these guys, rather than just allowing the eBGP peer to keep that same next hop address. So what I can do is configure a group configuration and then apply that to all the individual neighbors. Let me show you how it's done on router 1 and then I'll configure router 2 and 3 in the background. So bring up my terminal prompt. On router 1 I'm going to go into global config mode, get under the BGP process, and the way we configure a peer group is I'm going to type in neighbor and instead of typing in an IP address, I'm going to type in a word, as it's saying right here, a neighbor tag. And I'll just say, this is my uh, IBGP peers. Now I have the option to do all the same things as if I was configuring a neighbor. For example, I need to set up um, the remote AS. Oh, actually, before I do that, I need to label IBGP peers as a peer group. So that BGP knows this is a peer group, not just some DNS name that you're trying to uh, label. Now I can hit the up arrow and configure this just like a, an actual neighbor. I'll type in remote autonomous system 5500 because they all have the same remote autonomous system. I'll type in the next hop self because we'll need that keyword for all of the routes that are being received, just like I mentioned. Um, I will also type in the update source loopback1 because router1 uses its loopback address for redundancy. It's not peering from this interface or that interface. It's using its loopback so if any one interface goes down it has the redundancy to keep on chugging. Um, da, 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 da. I think that's it. That's all the commands that we would apply to those neighbors. Now all I need to do is create the neighbor relationships. I'm going to type in neighbor and what my remote neighbor address is. In this case, I'll do router 3 first, 3.3.3.3, because I'm going to use a loopback interface over there as well. And instead of putting all these same things, all of this configuration, on under that neighbor, I'm just going to type in peer group, followed by IBGP peers. As with most ca things, case does count. Hit the up arrow, change that for router 2 peer group, IBGP peers. And then finally, I'll put it in there for router 4. At that point, I have configured a full mesh relationship where router 1 is now attempting to peer with all three, oh, let me get that looking better, all three of these routers that it's communicating with. It's applying the same configurations to each one of them. So instead of me having to do individual configs on, on every single router uh, or for every single router, every single neighbor, I can just apply it in that peer group configuration. Now the last thing I want to mention before I go into the background and configure router 3, 2, and 4 for peer groups um, is why on earth we still have that neighbor relationship with router 4. You would think that once I established a neighbor relationship with these two, and once router 4 establishes a neighbor relationship with these two, we should be good, because router 4 will pass the routes from router 5 to router 3, and router 3 will pass them to router 1. That should work, correct? Mm, incorrect. That's because there's a special rule in BGP. It's known as BGP split horizon. Now, you may have heard of Split Horizon from all of our other routing protocols, our interior gateway protocols. Split Horizon says do not send updates back in the same direction that you received them on. But BGP Split Horizon is different. It says do not send updates that you receive via IBGP to other IBGP peers. So since Router 4 and Router 3 have an IBGP relationship, it will not, router 3 will not send those routes to router 1 because it violates BGP split horizon. Now that goes above and beyond what the, the typical Cisco BSCI uh, uh, series would, uh, would explain because that is part of the uh, BGP uh, series that we would talk about. That, you know, 
that is something that goes above and beyond this exam. If you're studying for the exam, that's, that's why I'm stumbling. I'm like, what am I trying to say? The exam, if you're trying to study for the exam, that's a topic that probably won't be on there because it is more advanced. You can actually fix that problem through something known as route reflectors. But now I'm digressing into concepts way beyond my point is if you want IBGP to work successfully, you have to have a full mesh of IBGP peers between every single router. Because otherwise, BGP split horizon rule says I will never send updates back in the same direction. Or <laughs> Now I'm thinking of the original one. I will never send IBGP updates that I receive to other IBGP peers. So everybody is required to have a direct relationship. Is it a mess? Yes. Is there a better way to do it? Yes. Will you check out the BGP video series to find that out? Of course. So what I'm going to do for now is go into the background, configure router 2, router 3, and router 4 for the peer groups and a full mesh of BGP relationships. Just like that, in a blink of time, it's done. I have all the, configures, uh, the routers configured for peer groups, and all of them have brought up their neighbor relationships. I'm sitting on router 1. I'm going to type in a show IP BGP summary to get a view of all the, a flyby view of all the neighbor relationships. And you can see that it has formed full neighbor relationships with 2, three and four those relationships couldn't form they would be stuck in active if it didn't have the mirrored relationships back and come to think of it this table does show a very good demonstration of the bgp split horizon all of the routes that router one is receiving are coming from its direct relationship from, with router four bgp split horizon says that router three and router two will not propagate those routes to router one and sure enough we look at the table Prefixes received, all five of them came from router 4, none from router 3, none from router 2. They're not sending anything along the way. So that is BGP split horizon in action. And at this point, I should be able to do a show, oh, take my caps lock off, show IP BGP. I see those routes, and let's try it one more time with that ping. Ping 200.1.1.1, which will ping all the way from router 1 completely through the network, router 3. 2 and 3, hit router 4, and hit router 5. There it is. We actually have uh, communication happening end-to-end, -end, so all of the uh, BGP networks are now reachable by any, any one of these routers. I'll just do a, uh, let me jump to router 2 and do a show run, just to give you a view of the peer group configuration when it was all said and done. So actually, it didn't take me that much time to do it all, just uh, using notepad and cut and paste. Let me scroll down to BGP. This is my little Sputnik router gets its show run uh, output there. There we go. You can see I configured the, the neighbor relationship and the peer group as IBGP peers are here as well, and then just applied that to every single neighbor. Poof, just like that, they came up. So we now have a working end-to-end -end BGP relationship. I want that to be the end of the new BGP concepts in this video, uh, meaning the, the big concepts of like, here's a new one, here's a new one, just because there's a lot that you need to, to let soak into your mind. A lot of these concepts like synchronization, split horizon, you know, they just all start blurring together. So take some time, let that soak in, maybe go through uh, those videos a couple times uh, to get those concepts down. What I do want to do is kind of put the, the ribbon on the package of BGP, if you will. I want to talk about how the neighbor relationships form, the communication that happens between those, and then go back through the show commands. I know from the beginning of implementation, I've just kind of thrown the show commands at you to verify without fully explaining what the show commands are, where they fit, and maybe some debug commands as well. So BGP neighbor relationships form through this five-step process. Every single neighbor, as you may have seen when we first started uh, creating the neighbor relationships back in the part one of implementation, all the neighbors start at idle. When they're in the idle state, the BGP router is verifying that it has a route to the neighbor. And remember, BGP is very slow. So it's looking at its table saying, OK, I see a neighbor of 2.2.2.2 configured. Do I know how to get there? Let me check my routing table. All of that time, you see the neighbor is idle. As soon as it moves to active, active means the router is now attempting to connect to the neighbor. Those are the two slowest steps of the BGP process that you'll see, moving from idle to active and active to open sent. 
open sent means that I sent a hello message, or I shouldn't call it that. That's kind of what I refer to it in slang. But I sent an open message, is what it's called in BGP, to my neighbor. We should, if everything goes well, receive an open confirm back, which is the neighbor's open message coming back to you, with all of their criteria. Now, it's at this point that we could hit a crossroads. If something is misconfigured, meaning that the router has some kind of configuration error, either you don't have the right update source, maybe the autonomous system number is typed in incorrect and the remote AS number, something's wrong. When you move from open sent, you will not receive an open confirm back, but instead it will cycle back to active. If you're doing a debug, which we're going to do in just a moment, we'll actually see it go from open sent and then drop right back to active again, starting the process again. It'll send it back to active. We call this stuck in active, meaning that the neighbor relationship is, is just not forming and there's some sort of parameter mismatch. Now, <laughs> I should say, when we say we call it, I should say I call it stuck in active. Stuck in active is actually a term that uh, applies to EIGRPs, routes, when they, uh, when they get kind of stuck in an active state where it can't find a backup. But the same style of thing applies to BGP. Stuck in active means your neighbor relationship is just not forming. What I want to show you is the uh, process these go through on a live router. Um, what I'd like to do is actually jump, I'd like to jump over to router 5. That's the one over at the ISP because it only have, has one neighbor relationship with router 4. So that way when we uh, reset it and we watch the neighbor process, we only see it for one and we won't get overwhelmed. So I'm on router 5. Let me just clear the screen. I'm going to do a debug. IP, BGP, and we'll do the events. You can see that I can check out the updates. I can debug everything, which is just the carriage return. Um, I can focus in on a specific neighbor. For now, I'll just say I want to see the events. Now, the command I'm about to show you is one you use all the time with BGP. It's a clear command. We clear the process anytime we want BGP to reset all of its neighbor relationships and apply any new policies that we have. It may sound like we don't do this often, but unfortunately, we do. If we apply new policies to BGP, if we're putting, for instance, uh, turning off synchronization, when I do that, I have to clear the process for that to apply to the routing updates. Um, anytime I put a new filter on, anytime I uh, reconfigure a neighbor, I need to clear the process or clear that individual neighbor. Um, in this case, I'll type in clear IP BGP star, which resets all neighbor relationships. Now look what happened. It moved from established to idle. Then it moved from idle to active. And here we sit. If I do a show IP BGP summary, you can see that we are just sitting at the active state. It's just kind of waiting in its slow state, uh, trying to find a uh, route to that neighbor. And then wham, just like that. You see it move from active to open sent open sent to open confirm because we have a good configuration open confirm to established and at that point the updates were received and we now have a active neighbor relationship with this router now this router router 4 does not have anything to tell us it happened to be that all of the information that they received was sent from router 5 remember this is the ISP router sending the routes to router 4 so that is an, an, a view of walking through every single one of those uh, processes, idle to active, active to open sent, to open confirmed, to establish since we had a good configuration. The last thing I'd like to do is officially show you all the show commands and debug commands that will prove useful to you when you're troubleshooting BGP. There are a lot of show commands and there are some decent amount of debugs, but I want to show you the ones that you will definitely use. So I'm going to bring up a connection. I've moved over to router 4 because that has a few more neighbor relationships, a little more fun to uh, verify. First command is my favorite, show IP BGP summary. That will show you a summary of everything BGP. Up here is just kind of a uh, activity table of what's going on with BGP, how much memory you're consuming, your local ID, what autonomous system number you're running in. And then below, you see all of your neighbor relationships in summary format. That is very handy to verify just about anything about your neighbors. Now, there is a show IP BGP neighbor command, but I never use it. 
because if you look, this is show IP BGP neighbor for one neighbor right here. Router one, bleh, all of this. Space, bleh, all of this. Space, bleh, all of this. You know, all of this is a single neighbor. Space, space. Okay, finally, we got to another neighbor. So I see neighbor two right there. And then we go through all the same things. It's just information overload. I could see using the command if you're really nitty gritty in the troubleshooting, but it will show you, I mean, how many keep alive you sent, how many open messages, you know, the state that that neighbor is currently in, uptime. But most of that can be found, All at least the useful stuff of that can be found all right there in a nice little table format. It's like doing a show IP interface versus a show IP interface brief. I rarely use show IP interface just because the brief command shows me everything I need. So that's the show IP BGP summary. Show IP BGP shows you the BGP routing table. Not the routing table, but the BGP table. All of the routes that it's receiving from its neighbors, of which the best are being chosen to go into the routing table. Now, as of right now, we're only seeing one next hop address for every single route that we have. But as we get into the more advanced attributes in the upcoming videos, we'll start seeing routes that have multiple next hop addresses because, of course, the Internet is going to have redundant paths to just about every network in existence. So from there, you'll see multiple entries for every single network, and then you'll see which one gets chosen as best to get moved to the routing table. Uh, let's see, what else? I got show IP BGP summary neighbors. Oh, one more. Show IP BGP. And the command is actually rib failure. Now, we're not going to see anything on here. You can see no information reported. But this stands for routing information based failure. If you have routes that are in the BGP table that are failing to show up in the routing table, meaning this little right angle bracket is not next to them, you can type in show IP rib uh, BGP rib failure, and most of the time it will give you a reason why it's not moving to the routing table. It will tell you, for example, maybe there's another route with a better administrative distance that's in the routing table. Um, this command is hit and miss for me. Um, first off, it's a new command, so old iOS versions don't support it. Um, but second off, it uh, there's, hmm, how do I say this? It doesn't work all the time. There's times where I'll have a ton of routes that just don't show up in the routing table. I see them in the BGP table, and I do this command and see exactly the same output you're seeing right now. Nothing. It doesn't tell me anything. Because this command is very uh, elementary. It only picks up the very uh, basic reasons why a route does not end up in the routing table. But those are the four BGP show commands that I use pretty consistently, minus rib failure. Um, Debug commands. Debug commands, the only one I use is debug IP BGP events. Okay. Now you can see I'm on a router that has a little newer iOS version. So it has a little more flexibility than the router we were on when we did the debug, uh, debug BGP events before. Um, debug events will show you all of the significant events that's happening with BGP without flooding you with too much information. If you want to zoom in on a specific neighbor, you can do that. You can see this is also one that supports IP version 6 neighbors. Um, but overall, the only other one that I have used is the updates, so I can actually watch the updates as they're being received by BGP. Finally, the last command is one that I showed you earlier, clear IP BGP, and you can choose an individual neighbor to clear, clear specific autonomous system numbers to wipe out all the neighbors from a certain system. Um, what I use, because I'm lazy, is the star, but that's only in a lab environment, because if you do that command in a production network, you just flush your 100 plus megabyte BGP table, and you have to receive it again from all your neighbors. You only need to reset neighbors Anytime you change policies, if I apply a new route map to a neighbor uh, to filter their routes, or I'm applying uh, different attributes that we haven't talked about yet, um, we have to clear the relationship. So this clear IP BGP command is used all the time um, when you're changing configurations for neighbors. We'll see it plenty more as we get into the attributes. That's the scoop on the foundation BGP configuration. Now you can see why it has its own series. That's the foundation.
<laughs> that's what you need to know to get BGP up and running. The rest of it is uh, gets plenty more advanced into the attributes. We're going to hit the, the, the uh, I'll say, the, the brief intro of the attributes as we get into some of the future videos. But to sum this one up, we saw BGP peer groups, a way of applying a group configuration to individual neighbors. We then saw how the relationships form and the process that it goes through. We did the debug and watched it. And we did a final review of the show and debug commands that will prove very useful to you when you're troubleshooting and verifying BGP. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.